Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu unserer nunmehr elften Online-Weinprobe vom Zanzarelli. Dieses Mal mit Herencia Altes aus Terra Alta in Spanien. Wir freuen uns sehr. Es ist ein Weingut, das wir neu im Programm haben oder wieder im Programm haben, das wir äh, äh, vor einigen Jahren schon mal hatten und dann auslaufen lassen haben und jetzt mit neuem Elan wieder reingenommen haben, weil sie nämlich inzwischen biologisch arbeiten, was sehr schön ist. Und äh, wir freuen uns auf Nuria Altes und Rafa de Hahn. Herzlich willkommen. Hello, there you are. Hello. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I just introduced you in German. So um, welcome to the tasting. Um, maybe you can start with telling us a f in a few words, where are you in Spain and a few words about the winery. So first, firstly, thank you for inviting us. We are very excited to have this tasting online. So Herencia Altes was, uh, well, it's located in the south of Catalonia, in a small region called Terra Alta, that means Highland. And uh, we founded the winery in 2010. Um, my family are farmers, I are vignerons for generations. And with Rafa, my husband, we decided to, to found a winery because it's our passion. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, at the moment, well, we are organic viticulture in the winery, and at the moment we have 75 hectares, uh, all in organic, and mainly is garnacha because Terra Alta is all about garnacha, uh, white but also red, and we have the most uh, um, oldest vines in in the world. <laughs> In terms of Garnacha Blanca. Okay, so let me translate. Also die äh, Terra Alta ist äh, in, in Katalonien, ähm, konntet ihr gerade auf der Karte sehen. Ähm, und das Weingut ist 2010 gegründet und hat äh, 75 Hektar, alles biologischer Anbau. Ähm, vorher für Generationen war die Familie auch schon im Weinbau tätig, aber damals halt äh, haben sie einfach Trauben produziert und sie weitergegeben und nicht selber als Weinmacher verarbeitet. Und das machen sie jetzt selber seit 2010. So. So should we start uh, after this quick introduction with putting something in the glass? Yeah, it's a good idea. So, well, I have to say that the location of the wine is really nice because we are in front of the uh, uh, hills, mm -hmm. hills of the River Ebro. Yes. So it's a natural barrier between the River Ebro and the Mediterranean Sea to our, our winery and vines. It's a really nice location. That we can, we see. can see in the pictures no. that we have a yeah. little bit later, because it's really, really beautiful. It's like living in a postcard. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start with um, our most well-known wine, which is the Garnacha Blanca. Um, at Herencio Artes, we make several white wines, an orange wine as well, and some sweet wines. And they are all made from 100% Garnacha Blanca, mm -hmm. which is quite nice to, to know because it's such a versatile grape. It can make quite young, um, aromatic wines like mm -hmm. this one, much more serious gastronomic wines if treated differently and if the vines are older. And of course, you can have skin contact orange wines as well um, if you're looking for something completely different. So this is 100% Garnacha Blanca 2019. Uh, This is 100% um, organic and vegan, so we don't spray anything on our vineyards. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say this is probably our most important wine. Uh, this is what we make most of in the winery. It's what people know us for, the Garnacha Blanca, and also what they know Terra Alta for. Mm -hmm. uh, even though we make rosés and reds, uh, Garnacha Blanca really is the most important great variety in the region. Mm -hmm. And if you were to go to Barcelona or other parts of Catalonia, um, on the wine list, you would almost certainly find Carnacha Blanca from Terra Alta. Oh. So, yeah, because give me a s we have a big history with Garnacha Blanca. It, um, our ancestors decided to put Garnacha Blanca in the 15th century because it's a variety um, with a um, big capacity to adaptation in a dry weather. 
and Terra Alta, it drains uh, really low. It's uh, 300 liters uh, a year, which is nothing. And the Garnacha Lanka has a big capacity to adaptation to the dry weather. So give me a second to translate, because so, I will forget everything you said. <laughs> um, mm. um, der uh, erste Wein ist ein Garnacha Blanca. Um, das ist mit die wichtigste Rebsorte in der Region Terra Alta. Um, eine schöne, aromantische, junge Rebsorte, kann aber mehr, kann auch als ähm, Orange-Wein, also mit Skin-Kontakt, also mit Hautkontakt ausgebaut werden oder auch als komplexere Weine für, für, für die höhere Gastronomie. Das hier ist jetzt so ein junger, frischer. Ihr könnt ja schon mal reinschnuppern und die Frucht rum wahrnehmen. Ähm, und... Ähm, die Weine von äh, ähm, Rencia Altes wurden in den 50er Jahren schon angebaut, ähm, weil diese Rebsorte tatsächlich sehr, sehr gut eignet für trockene Gegenden. Weil ähm, der hauptsächliche Niederschlag ist im Winter und bildet quasi eine Wasserreserve. Und das ist halt wichtig, dass eine Rebsorte das kann. Und das bietet der Ganacia Blanca. Ähm, damit habe ich, glaube ich, alles zusammengefasst, was gesagt wurde. Falls ihr Fragen habt, bitte immer im Chat gleich fragen. Sollte ich noch mal erwähnen. Und ähm, please go on. Um, actually, uh, we have around um, 40%, almost 40% of the Garnacha all over the world in Terra Alta. Mm -hmm. And we still have vines really old. Uh, we have a vine which is 100 years old mm -hmm. vine. Just um, after the phylloxera mm -hmm. and um, is uh, is uh, fantastic because uh, the all vines has a big capacity to resist even in a difficult vintage because the roots are so long so it goes deep inside and uh, looking for the water reserve clever clever old vine <laughs> That's a good word. Um, so, um, es sind clevere alte Weine, die haben sehr, sehr tiefe Wurzeln und kommen halt noch an die Wasserreserven, um, selbst wenn es ein sehr trockenes Jahr ist. Und dadurch haben die uh, einfach eine sehr gute, gleichbleibende Qualität, weil die alten Reben einfach bis nach unten runterkommen. 40 Prozent der weltweiten Ganacha-Ernte Ganacha kommen aus Terra Alta, um, das, um die Wichtigkeit der Rebsorte nochmal uh, für die Gegend zu uh, beschreiben. So. There we see a picture of the vineyard, so the people get a pr an impression yeah. of uh, where you live. Here it's important to note that the Garnacha is all bush vines. So you can see there are no trained vines, these are old vines. Um, and in that form, the, the leaves help to protect the grapes from sunburn mm -hmm. because we can get very high temperatures. So this form of vine helps us avoid the, the grapes getting burnt in the height mm -hmm. of summer. Um, die die Buschform, also die ihr gerade gesehen habt, verhindert, dass die, ähm, ähm, dass die Blätter ähm, hängen so ein bisschen über die Trauben und dadurch wird der Wein in der, in der, im Hochsommer geschützt vor, vor äh, Verbrennungen, weil auch Trauben können verbrennen ähm, und deswegen wird die Buschform gewählt. <lacht> Sorry. And, um, for me, one of the most um, characteristics of, in terms of weather in, in our region is the influence of the winds. We have two winds, one which is called Cerz, Cierzo in Spanish, which is coming from the north and is very dry. So this wind helps us to clean all the disease and is very helpful in organic viticulture. Mm -hmm. But then we have the Garbi coming from the seaside. And this is very fresh. So even in the summer, by night, it's cool, it's refreshing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's nice to have a good balance between moderation and acidity. Um, and is it, um, um, if there is a high difference between the temperature at day and at night, is good for the wines, right? Yeah, yeah there is, there okay. is. Um, also es gibt... Not, not much in German, but it, it, there is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Es gibt äh, zwei Winde in, in der Gegend, die helfen, die Weine ähm, ähm, infektionsfrei zu halten. Also quasi, dass keine Krankheiten sich ransetzen können. Weil wenn so Krankheiten wie zum Beispiel Mehl Mehltau, wenn es ein bisschen feucht ist und kein Wind ist, dann kann Mehltau zum Beispiel entstehen, weil das nicht weggetragen wird. Ähm, wenn aber die Gegend viele Winde hat, dann blasen die quasi durch die Wein äh, äh, 
äh, Berge und äh, tragen, sorgen dafür, dass da keine Staufeuchte entstehen kann. Und das ist natürlich gut für die Weine und auch, wenn äh, zwischen Tag und Nacht ein hoher Temperaturunterschied ist. Und der eine Wind ist der Cherches. How, how was the name of the first? Cherches. Cherches. Oh, oh. Cherches is a Catalan name. Cherches is a Spanish okay. name. Um, and the other uh, uh, wind is from the sea. And that... And it's called Garbi. 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 That's the other wind, that, das kommt, der kommt vom, äh, von der See und äh, sorgt dafür, dass, wenn es warm am Tag ist, kommt nachts der kühle äh, Wind vom, vom Ozean und kühlt die Weine wieder ab. Und, und wenn es tagsüber sehr warm ist und nachts sehr kalt, also ein hoher Temperaturunterschied, ist das immer sehr, sehr gut für, für Weine, die äh, auch einfach lange halten. So back to your wine. That's in the glass. Yeah. So when, when we're making Garnacha Blanca, it's a, quite a difficult grape variety to work with. Um, and that's a reason why it's been misunderstood generally um, in the world, I think, because you have to be very careful with the bitterness. Mm -hmm. um, Garnacha Blanca has a very high level of um, polyphenol in the skins. Mm -hmm. So to avoid extracting those polyphenols, which gives you the bitterness and the tannins, you have to be very careful. The most important thing is to pick by hand, so no machine picking. And then we don't need to hold bunches into the press. So by doing that, we avoid extracting from the skins. Oh. And we get a much purer must that has less bitterness and more elegance. And that's the key for us to making good garnacha oh. blanca. And it has in the nose a, um, a nice fruitiness and a nice freshness. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, der der um, garnacha blanca ist tatsächlich ein bisschen komplizierte Rebsorte, die viele Polyphenole in der Haut hat. Um, das sind Bitterstoffe. Und wenn die quasi in den Wein gelangen, ähm, dann hat man halt einen leicht bitteren Wein. Und damit die nicht reingelangen, äh, wird erstmal von Hand gelesen. Und außerdem werden die nur in kleinen Mengen gepresst, dass da einfach nicht so viele von diesen Polyphenolen äh, in den Wein gelangen. So. And also because of the way we make this wine, uh, with less skin contact and less polyphenol, the wine will age better. Mm -hmm. Because the more polyphenol you have in the wine, the faster it will oxidize. Mm -hmm. So by avoiding skin contact, the wine is much paler and less likely to develop um, oxidative quality after six months or a year, which is what happens to many other Garnacha Blancas. Ah, okay. um... Durch, diese, äh, durch diesen wenigen Hautkontakt und äh, ähm, vorsichtige Verarbeitung ähm, altert der Wein besser. Äh, weil normalerweise ähm, oxidiert Ganache Blanca halt ungünstigerweise und hat halt viele äh, äh, Bitterstoffe drin. Und ähm, dadurch, dass das so vorsichtig verarbeitet wird, hat dieser das nicht. Jetzt muss ich aber auch erstmal Schluck trinken. Hm. It's a very pretty one. In the nose, you can smell a lot of peach. Mm -hmm. and, and what's nice about Garnacha is quite a rich, full-bodied, or well, medium to full-bodied wine on the palate. But it has this freshness from the acidity. That comes from the um, chalky soils. Mm -hmm. That comes from the altitude. And that makes makes the wine uh, in balance. If we didn't have that acidity, the wine would be too heavy. So it has the richness, but also the acidity. It's a very nice freshness and it, it has something very clean and clear in the mouth, you know, very straight. <laughs> yes, it has good, we call it nervous energy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And a little bit of saltiness as well. Garnacha Blanca typically has a touch mm -hmm. of saltiness on the palate. I was just uh, thinking about what what it is that I I have in the in the back of the mouth. So that's exactly what you just explained. <laughs> yeah. um, that's that's the little bit of the bitterness of typical of Garnacha mm -hmm, Blanca yeah. that through, um, and we we feel that as as like a salty mm -hmm. character. 
if it's too bitter, then it becomes too much and a bit uh, difficult to enjoy. You want just a touch of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very nice. So uh, let me translate quickly. Um, Ganacha Blanca uh, um, in diesem Fall hat halt am Ende so eine leichte Salzigkeit. Ich weiß nicht, ob ihr die schon rausgeschmeckt hat, habt. Um, könnt ihr ja nochmal so ein bisschen konzentriert nachschmecken. Und in der Nase ist es hauptsächlich Pfirsich, den man riecht. Um, ich muss sagen, diese, dieser Wechsel von Fruchtigkeit und, und äh, Salzigkeit und Länge und Frische und äh, ein bisschen Säure ähm, ist sehr angenehm. Um, so, I just ex one, one other thing. Sorry, I yes, just explained the, 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 the balance between the, the fruitiness and the, and the acidity. It's, it's very nice and, and, and it has a complexity that you don't um, look, expect in, in a wine in this price range. <laughs> Thank you. And, and also, we we're very happy with the 19 vintage because it was the first year we did not use any selected yeasts. 100% of the fermentation was from natural oh. yeasts found in the vineyards. Oh, that's great. So that's particularly challenging when you're making white wines and rosés because we have very little skin contact. And of course, the yeasts are on yes. the skins. <laughs> So we had very long fermentation for these for the whites and the rosés, lasting four months, and that was um, and uh, we'd never we'd never experienced that kind of pressure before to get the fermentations finished. So we were glad when they finally fermented dry. Mm -hmm. es que, the, the point is that for us it's very important to follow the same philosophy to make wines in no lower range, from the first one to the other to the last one. So our philosophy is to make organic viticulture. Everything is picked by hand, so mm -hmm. it's very artisanal uh, selection, mm -hmm. and then minimum intervention. So we use only a little bit of sulfur at the end, but two years ago, as Rafa told you, we decided to, to use uh, spontaneous fermentation with no inoculation, and we are very happy with that because it's more exciting and also more pure. Mm -hmm. Okay, für diesen 2019 da sind Sie sehr glücklich, dass, dass er so schön geworden ist, weil das ist das erste Jahr, wo Sie keine extra Hefe zugefügt haben. Also keine, äh, ähm, normalerweise wird bei Weißweinen Hefe zugefügt. Eine Reinhefe ist das, manchmal auch eine besondere Zuchthefe, die für eine bestimmte Rebsorte äh, äh, quasi gemacht ist. In dem Fall ist er ohne Zusatz von äh, Hefen ähm, äh, in, in die Gärung gegangen und äh, auch sehr lange fermentiert worden. Vier Monate in dem Fall, was sehr lange ist für ein Weißwein. Aber das Ergebnis, finde ich, spricht schon für sich. Und Sie machen das, damit der Wein möglichst pur, also natürlich und pur ist. Also ganz quasi back to the roots und einfach sehr schön natürlich. I hope I, I'm translating that right. <lacht> No, I'm just trying to grasp the idea be behind it as well. Of course, it's you know, I th I think it's important to to understand wines in when you talk directly with like the details you get to know, and it paints a picture about the winery you're talking with for me. So uh, um, it's very interesting to grasp the philosophy behind uh, or the idea behind the, the winery. So I'm trying to grasp mm -hmm. that as well and to translate that as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think um, this type of wine is, is absolutely fabulous now after eight to 12 months in bottle. But I recommend um, to people not to hold it back deliberately, but if they have a bottle that's two years old or three years old, it will be absolutely fine. We do tastings around the world where even with our, um, our kind of youngest white wine, after three years, it's tasting really well. So that's, that's a great feeling for us to, to see that, how the wine develops. Yeah, I always think that's one of the interesting things to do with wine, to just forget one bottle and then compare with the new vintage and see how it develops. And I think that's one of the things that's one of the 
details in wine drinking uh, that that gives me real pleasure to to try out oh i have this vintage and i have that vintage and le now let's try how it de has developed in comparison it's very nice to to try things like that That's uh, that's that's what I yeah. always tell my customers customers as well. Like, just forget one bottle for a year or two in 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 the back of the your your uh, um, in the back of your uh, uh, wine uh, um, storage, um, and then try it again. Yes. Yeah. But so, sometimes it's difficult to resist the temptation, yes. no? <laughs> yes, of course. Sometimes you just need a bottle now. <laughs> So uh, in our uh, in our range, range we have uh, different um, blocks of, of wines. We are trying now the um, we call be the villa, which means uh, uh, village wines. Mm -hmm. And on the labels, we can see different uh, pictures of my town where where I was born. Mm -hmm. And the, the the girl pretends to be myself when I was. Uh, Little girl playing between vines. Mm -hmm. That's the history of um, of our life in 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 this uh, town. So, um, should we move on to the uh, um, rosé, or should we uh, show some more pictures, or are there questions in the chat? Ich würde eine Chatfrage äh, vorgreifen. Ist der Wein für Sofa oder zum Essen? Oh, the, the chat is uh, uh, there is a chat question. Um, if the wine is more for Drinking it on the couch or or drinking it with some certain food. Well, I think it's quite versatile. So for me, it's a perfect wine to drink. Meanwhile, you are in the kitchen cooking. <laughs> it's a perfect wine, but you can use it as aperitif and also as a pairing with a with a flat dish of rice or chicken. Is, is with that. The ideal dish for me to pair with this wine is what they would typically serve on the terraces in Nuria's hometown, which would be garlic and um, squ squid with garlic or little baby uh, calamaris, mm. uh, which is really nice because they have that sort of oily texture with a little bit of flavor and the acidity from the garnacha cuts through that that sort of um, oily character and it's a really nice combination mm -hmm. sounds very lovely <laughs> mm -hmm. so um, also der wein ist um, um, für die köchin während sie das essen zubereitet uh, um, oder halt mit uh, kleinen baby um, tintenfisch nee squid was is squid um, die, ja, Kala, kleine Baby Kalamaris, äh, ähm, ähm, weil die ölige Konsistenz von den Kalamaris mit dem Wein ist halt eine gute Balance. So, dann äh, wechseln wir mal die Farbe auf Rosé. So, we change colors to Rosé. So we're tasting the Garnacha Negra Rosat 2019. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the spelling of Garnacha is the same for the white as well. Yep. Um, that's the Catalan spelling. If we were in the main other parts of Spain, it would be spelt with a CH rather than the TXA. And because we're in Catalonia, we have to write Negra, which is the how the great variety is uh, written, mm -hmm. and we have to use the full the full um, form of the the grape, ah. Garnacha Negra. So that's why some people think, why is it does it say Negra on a rosé wine? That's just the great variety. Negra means uh, yeah, red. it's like Tinto. Tinto. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But um, it's like like the complete uh, uh, Catalan name. Correct. Okay. Yes. So uh, let me explain that. So um, on the on the uh, bottle you see uh, Garnacha Negra, 
Das heißt so viel wie Ganacha Tinto oder roter Ganacha, also je nachdem, wie man es ausspricht. Das ist einfach die katalanische Variante des Namens und sie muss halt in voller Traubenvariation, also die, der Name der Traube ist exakt so und deswegen muss er so draufstehen, auch wenn es ein Rosé ist, das verwirrt manchmal ein bisschen. Aber es ist halt der Rosé von der Traube Ganacha Negra. So. Well, um, we don't make a lot of rosé, um, as most wine makers would tell you. It's it's a difficult job um, planning how much rosé to make at the beginning of the year or at vintage time, because you never know how much you're going to sell. So you have to make a guess. Mm -hmm. um, we're making a bit more rosé every year, and I think. It's becoming quite popular in, in a lot of our markets, yeah, this, particularly this style of rosé, which I guess people would describe as a, as a very pale, almost Provençal yes. style. Um, and that's because um, to get this, this style of wine, it's all about, again, skin mm -hmm. contact. So I can minimize skin contact as much as possible. So the whole way we make the wine is identical to the white wine just using red grapes so how how many is ours is this just okay uh, this, there is only with the skins during the press the time we press okay also there, so there's we... now like so and so many hours skin contact it's just during the press uh, the color comes out and that's all wow yeah that's right yeah so it could be 40 minutes to one hour. Wow, because um, usually it's like like uh, uh, six hours to to twenty four hours with the, with with skin contact for the rosés. What I know, at, at at least it's how how I heard from the different wineries how they make their rosés, and um, this is quite like a short time of contact. Um, which I find yeah. very interesting that it works that way. Yeah. Because with the Ramacha Negra, if we keep longer with the skins, then we can have this pale color. Mm. It I'm, goes quickly to more red. Yeah. Also, well, there are two things to, 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 to say. One is that we want to avoid the tannins and the bitterness that you find in mm -hmm. the skins. So exactly the same as the white. So that short skin contact means we have less bitterness and ah. tannins. And secondly, we don't want to have to make any changes to the color um, once we have the must. Mm -hmm. So to, to keep the wine as natural as possible and low intervention as much as possible, we want to have this color just through minimizing skin mm -hmm. contact. Once you have too much color, then you have to remove it, which is not what we want to do because that wouldn't be in keeping with our Uh, philosophy of winemaking. So we want to keep the whole process as natural as possible. Yeah, that makes sense. So, also, der, der Wein wird tatsächlich nur während der äh, Pressung äh, hat er äh, Hautkontakt und die Farbe beim Rot, beim Rosé oder beim Rotwein, weil er ist ja aus einem Rotwein gemacht, sitzt in den Häuten. Das heißt, nur beim Pressen wird quasi die Farbe mit rausgepresst und ansonsten ist keiner Hautkontakt äh, bei dem Wein, bevor er in die Gärung geht. Und deswegen hat er diese zarte, äh, äh, blasse Farbe, fast wie so ein provinzialischer Wein. Also, wenn ihr mal in Frankreich Wein. Äh, ähm, probiert, da ist Provence das große, die große Rosé-Ecke und da, da ist es genau dieser Lachston, zum Teil ein bisschen dunkler, zum Teil ein bisschen heller noch, der quasi die Farbe ausmacht und deswegen der ist so ganz zart und das ist halt auch wieder um zu verhindern, dass Bitterstoffe in den Wein kommen, damit er so zart und, und leicht mineralisch bleibt, wie er jetzt ist. Am besten erstmal ein bisschen das Glas schwenken, dass, das, dass der Wein ein bisschen sich öffnet und dann mal reinschnuppern, weil nach dem Bewegen schnuppert ihr mehr. I just explained that um, 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 if you move the wine a little bit in the glass, you just get the, the scan some better to your nose than just, you know, um, without moving. And it is a very nice uh, uh, harmony smell, harmoni harmonious smell that you have. We always describe our wines as being um, elegant, not shouty. By that we say they don't have 
huge aromatic uh, punch. Mm -hmm. We like to think that the wines develop gently in the glass and they speak to us quietly. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to be overwhelmed by the aromas because that can become quite tiring. So you want to have to look for them a little bit, give the wine a chance to develop in the mm -hmm. glass and, and speak to us, as I said, gently. And at, at the same time, it's quite pleasant to drink, so it's easy. Mm -hmm. And at the end, bottles uh, finish always, so <laughs> that's, the, that's the point, mm -hmm. no? It invites you to drink a second uh, uh, sip and another sip and another sip. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Like, and with every sip, you taste a little bit different. It, it develops a little bit more. And yes. for me, for me, it's a perfect wine to 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 pairing with a paella mm. in the summer with uh, lots of, of people where we can. <laughs> yes, that would be nice. So uh, we were talking about um, your winery, and um, um, we should uh, um, maybe show some more pictures because um, the area is so lovely, and we should share that with the customers. <laughs> So uh, this is like a recent picture, like uh, la last yeah. week. This was last week, yeah, uh, 10 days ago. We have a massive snow that's not uh, usual. We have a little bit of snow, but this time it was 60 centimeters. That's a lot for your area um, and in Spain in general. Yeah, it is. And we are very happy because vines now have a big reserve of water for the next vintage mm -hmm. and um, in, a, in a place where we don't have many rain is absolutely fantastic. And, and then uh, the snow kill all the parasites and disease and bacteria, which is uh, really good too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This is the winery. Here we have a place to with a barbecue to to have uh, people mm -hmm. it's like your tasting terrace <laughs> yeah yeah that's very nice and then uh, the winery is uh is not connected to the to the electric uh grid grid we are um, self-sufficient with uh, solar mm -hmm. panels Uh, because we have a lot of sun, we decided to put just uh, solar panels. Mm -hmm. Let me quickly explain in German. Um, so, das ist der Blick auf die, auf die Terrasse des Weingutes mit 60 cm Schnee. Und äh, im Gegensatz zum, zum städtischen und restlichen Teil von Spanien sind sie wirklich sehr glücklich über dieses, diesen vielen Schnee, weil das bedeutet, dass sie für den, nächste, für den nächsten Jahrgang eine, eine Wasserreserve haben. Die Reben haben einfach äh, Zugang zu Wasser, das unten an ihren Wurzeln drauf wartet, langsam verbraucht zu werden. Und weil es eine Gegend ist, in der sehr, sehr wenig Niederlande Schlag ist. Und da unten ist dann halt auch die äh, Terrasse, wo man äh, Barbecue und äh, Tastings haben kann. Und hier seht ihr die kleinen Busch, äh, ähm, Sachen, äh, Buschreben in, äh, im Schnee. Also 60 cm Schnee ist auch schon ungewöhnlich viel in der Gegend. So. Um, when we, uh, when, uh, when we opened the winery a few years later, we decided to to invest in a in a project called the rewilding project mm -hmm. and um, to preserve the biodiversity uh, surrounded the winery so we firstly we planted uh, 13000 um, autochthon uh, plants mm -hmm. uh, around the winery and then we put some boxes of uh, birds and and bats um, to help Uh, the diversity. Mm -hmm. I think we have a small reserve of water with a webcam, and we the, the webcam let us to know which kind of animals uh, have in the in the vines. 
Okay, Sie haben ähm, um das Weingut rum äh, 30.000 Pflanzen gepflanzt, um die Biodiversität äh, äh, aufzuforsten ähm, und auch ähm, Vogel- und äh, Fledermauskästen äh, aufgehängt. Und es gibt eine, ein Wasser, ein, 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 eine Wasserstelle, an der eine Webcam ist, wo, wo Sie sehen, wie viele verschiedene Tiere quasi davon profitieren, dass es das so schön äh, bunt und äh, bepflanzt ist. Also es ist halt nicht nur rein und rein und rein von Wein, sondern dazwischen halt auch viel Natur. Und das ist ein Projekt, an dem Sie teilgenommen haben, um die Biodiversität größer zu machen für das Weingut. Also eine sehr äh, ähm, ganzheitliche Philosophie, würde ich jetzt so sagen. So, back to you. Well, you can, you can see here, the building itself is um, quite modern. Mm -hmm. um, and the design was from our friend and neighbor, uh, who's an architect. And the thinking was to try to simulate um, the gaps in a forest. So we're trying, for, trying to integrate the building as much as possible. And uh, we, as Nuria said, we planted a lot of mm. trees around the building. Over time, these would grow up and help integrate the building into the landscape. But one of the great advantages of our winery is that it's built in our vineyard. So this is a 21 hectare uh, farm here, and the building itself is surrounded by old vines, mm -hmm. old Garnacha Blanc. That's beautiful. So it's very, yes, it's great when you come to visit. We don't have to travel to see the vines. You can just walk out the door and be surrounded and immersed in it's them. It's perfect. It's it's very beautiful. What's uh, in the back in the back of the building? Is that like a, a, um, a castle or is it like just big stones where you can climb on? This, this is the mountain range. This is the mountain range, yeah. Actually, we have these mountains of the of the of the Ebro, mm -hmm. which are one of the most um, emblematic scenari from Terra Alta. Um, there is some rocky mountains where Picasso, because Picasso was living in Horta de San Juan, which is a town nearby, mm -hmm. and in the in the Terra Alta place. And he was inspired to start uh, the Cubismo uh, style through these mountains. Ah, okay, that's interesting. So, um, in, im Hintergrund vom, vom, vom Weingut, das Weingut ist so designt, dass es äh, sich in die Landschaft integrieren soll und die äh, äh, Lücken in einem Wald sozusagen darstellen soll mit den äh, äh, Elementen. Wurde von einem Freund und Nachbarn, der äh, ein befreundeter Architekt ist, äh, designt. Und ähm, Picasso lebte auch in der Nähe, in der Gegend. Und diese Berge, die ihr im Hintergrund seht, wo man wohl auch klettern kann, hoffentlich, ähm, kann man, äh, ähm, da wurde äh, Picasso zum Kubismus inspiriert. Also er hat ja quasi den Kubismus miterfunden und ähm, da, diese Berge sind wohl schuld dran. And um, we, we, we talk about history, um, to 500 meters from the winery or maybe less, we have a old Iberian town where the archaeologist found a stone tongue of wine from the third century before Christ. Wow, that's old. Very old, yeah. yeah. And, and, and more recently they discovered a Roman settlement as well um, in the vineyards. So it's you can the position of the winery is very strategic i think over the centuries people saw it as a good place to build defense uh fortifications or mm -hmm. settlements because it has the vantage point over all the surrounding yeah. um the views that's interesting um, um how is that in in in, in germany it's uh, as soon as they found find something archaeological you can't move a stone anymore how is that in a vineyard when they find like something roman isn't that complicated then <laughs> no because we already had the winery when we built the winery the archaeologists came to make a supervision and they can find anything in the building mm -hmm. where we built the building And a couple of years later, um, the University of Barcelona came and uh, they detected that, that, that it was a Roman uh, sentiment there in the in the vines. But at the moment, is there? 
because <laughs> the university don't have any money to do nothing right now. So mm -hmm. yeah. we'll see. Okay. That's interesting still. Um, so um, uh, we saw the pictures uh, of the snow and um, we should mention that you have a, a, a really uh, interesting way of making sure people can look at your vineyard um, with a 3D uh, thing on Street View, right? That's something we should mention. I th yeah, that's, that's the benefits of technology today. Um, we can take you on a 3D tour of the winery, which is ah, quite fun. Ich, uh, soll ich dir jetzt reinschmeißen um, oder wollen wir noch auf dem, uh, yeah, nach should, den Roten warten? Uh, Michael is asking if she, we should put it on now or should we wait after the first red wine? I, I would bring it in, in another break. Um, yeah, we can put after the red we, wine. We can, pull, yeah. we can pull the first red wine. Yeah, sure. Okay, so we do that. <laughs> Then we move to the reds. So... Um, So we're going to try um, three reds. The first two um, are in our classic range. And the thinking behind having two reds at the same quality level is that we want to have two different styles of wine. The first is Garnacha, and the second wine will be a blend. The reason we have that is the Garnacha on its own, we think is a really fresh, vibrant, lighter, uh, more medium bodied wine. Whereas the second wine we'll find is a little bit more full bodied. Mm -hmm. Because as a autochton varieties wow. in Terrata we have Carnacha, Cariñena, but then um, 30 years ago uh, we decided to plant uh, Syrah, which is a um, French variety. But for me, the Syrah is the best uh, one of the varieties that makes um, the better adaptation to the to the soils and weather in Terrata. Mm -hmm. So this is 100% Garnacha. So this would be Grenache um, in, in France. Um, we call it Garnacha Negra, as we decided, we described before. Mm -hmm. It's, although it's the same grape officially as the Garnacha you find in Aragon or in Rioja, mm -hmm. we think it's mutated a little bit um, on the Mediterranean coast. It has a more red fruit profile rather than a darker fruit mm -hmm. profile. As, as I said before, it seems to be a little bit lighter, thinner skinned as well. So the color is not quite as dark as some other mm -hmm. Garnacha. And, uh, but, uh, and also that's an influence of the soil and again, uh, the balance of the winds. Mm -hmm. Because, um, because um, it has a big maturation because of the sun, but then again, the sea breeze helps the variety to have a nice acidity. Mm -hmm. It's for me very important because it, it has a quite a degrees of alcohol, mm -hmm. but you can know that because the acidity. Okay, so um, äh, das ist auch ein Garnacha Negra, also ein äh, äh, roter Garnacha oder Grenache, wenn man in Frankreich ist, ähm, 100% Prozent ähm, und auch er profitiert von den Winden, die äh, äh, Tag und Nacht äh, sind. Und es ist ähm, eine sehr schöne Mischung aus dieser Leichtigkeit. Also ähm, es, ähm, ähm, Rafa sagte gerade, er glaubt, dass das in Terra Alta einfach ein bisschen anderer Ganacha ist und ein bisschen mutiert ist, weil er einfach ein bisschen leichter ist in der Farbe als im Rest von Spanien. Und halt auch ähm, ein schönes Säure-Fruchtspiel hat und äh, in, in Terra Alta mehr zu roten Beeren neigt, während er im Rest von Spanien mehr zu dunklen oder Waldfruchtnoten äh, neigt, also zu schwarzen Beeren. Ähm, aber das könnt ihr einfach mal reinschnuppern und selber äh, äh, rausfinden, ob ihr das auch findet. So, I just described the, the difference between the normal Ganacha and the Terra Alta Ganacha that you explained. Right. And um, if, if Michael can put the photo of the of the winery of the barrels, 
to explain the beautification? Um, you, you, this one or the wooden one? Well, both. Yeah, both. both. This is yeah. good because here, here we can see the two. Well, we're going to see the two main um, wine making rooms in the mm -hmm. winery. Um, so here we have concrete tanks. And the reason we decided to use concrete was before building the winery, we traveled quite widely through Europe, looking at well-known wineries around France and Italy in particular. And we saw more people using this type of tank. Mm -hmm. I think reflecting how wine tastes are changing, moving towards complexity in wines without necessarily finding a lot of oak character. Mm -hmm. So these tanks themselves are very useful because they, we can do fermentation in the tanks. They have openings on the top that allows us to um, put whole grapes mm -hmm. in there and big doors, which allows us to remove the skins. But they really become useful for aging the wines. Mm -hmm. So we, we use a combination of concrete tanks. And then in the next slide, we can see the types of barrels that we use. That's like um, bigger yeah. than uh, the barrique, right? On the right side, yeah. it's barrique. Yeah. And in the yeah, we use um, in the middle, you can see 500 and 600 mm -hmm. liters. But then in the left side, we use uh, the foodres, which are 5,000 the bigger. Mm -hmm. And the, the smaller is uh, 2,500 wow, liters. Wow, that's big. Yeah, this is from um, Austria. It's Austrian oak, it's Tokinger. Mm -hmm. And um, we are very happy with the result because um, they are very gentle with the wine. Mm -hmm. And um, the Garnacha, which is our Garnacha, which is medium body wine, we don't need a much impact of oak. If we use if we use the small barrique, it's too much for the wine. Mm -hmm. Because our intention is to preserve the aromas of the variety as much as possible. Wow. Ähm, Nochmal zum Erklären, auf dem ersten Bild habt ihr die äh, ähm, Betontanks gesehen, Concrete Tanks, sehr schöne, wie ich finde, weil ich habe schon andere gesehen, äh, die hier sehen sehr rund und schön, äh, harmonisch aus. Um, how big are the, uh, the Concrete Tanks? Is it 5000 liters? Concrete Tank, no, the biggest is 6000 uh, and 300 and the smaller is 3700. Ah, okay. Because uh, it's hard to 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 uh, uh, see a size, you know, because there's no no person beside it, so you can't grasp the, how big they are. Because mm. yeah. um, and they're very heavy. So these these tanks, you have to put them in the winery before the roof goes on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> okay. So we were lucky because it's a new winery, so we lifted them in by a crane. And then put the roof on top. Oh wow! But if you ever want to grow and need more of them, it gets difficult, right? We need to open the roof again. It's not easy. Okay. Uh, um, also die Concrete sind uh, zwischen 6.300 uh, Litern und 3.700 Litern sind die kleinen, um, was eine sehr schöne große Größe ist, aber auch sehr viel Sinn macht. Ähm, und die sind so schwer, dass sie äh, äh, reingehoben werden mussten, bevor das Dach auf das neue Gebäude kam. Ähm, äh, hatte ich eben auch gerade nachgefragt. Es wird kompliziert, falls sie mal wachsen und mehr brauchen, äh, dann müssen sie das Dach abnehmen. Ähm, jetzt zu, zurück zu den Holz. Äh, äh, ähm Fässern. In der Mitte seht ihr die Reihe, das sind 500 und 600 Liter große Fässer. Auf der rechten Seite sind Barriques und links, das sind ganz große 5000 und 2500 Liter Fässer. Die werden in Österreich gefertigt aus österreichischer Eiche. Das ist ein Detail, das ich auch noch nicht wusste, dass Österreich auch Fässer macht. Ich würde fast sagen, die sind groß genug, um, Sauna, um eine Sauna reinzubauen, wenn man die nicht mehr braucht. Ähm, kann man ja mal nachfragen. Ähm, Okay, back to the wines. So in the glass, what do we smell? For me, it's, it's, uh, as Rafa told you, our garnacha is all about uh, breadfruit. It's cherry, strawberry. Mm -hmm. We get a little bit of the spice from the, from the oak as well, which is nice. It's not too sweet. Um, it's there, but it's integrated. So in which, uh, in which barrels are, is this wine uh, um, uh, rest? In the, in the large, in the large, in the large ones. Okay. 
Yes, so about half of the wine would be aged in fudre, the other half would be aged in the concrete tanks. Ah, okay. We like to have a, have a mix of um, élevage. Oh. So, so a little bit of the, the um, um, minerality comes from the concrete and a bit, a bit of the fruitiness and, and wooden uh, touch comes from the wood. I think so, yeah. The, the oak here will add, it sounds a bit strange, but it helps add freshness as well. We'll find that more on the palate because it adds these kind of tannins that give it more um, freshness, this kind of um, acidity and, and tension in the wine. On the nose, it's very neutral. The oak is quite mm -hmm. neutral. We're not going to see a lot of influence on that. Just general complexity, um, more different different flavors coming through mm -hmm. because of the six months that it spends in the oak. But we don't want any vanillary character yeah. on there. It's just it's just a little bit of toastiness, just very gentle. It's very interesting. Of course, I think it's a wine that people could try who say they don't like wood. I think they would like this wine because they don't taste the typical wood touch um, or the, the, the taste that wood gives wine. Um, and some people come to me, oh, I want a nice red wine, but don't give me anything with wood. And and I think this yeah. wine would like trick them into in, into liking wood without knowing it's wood. <laughs> yeah, because our intention is that um, is not to add uh, wood flower. Is only mm, the the food there helps the wine to be more mm -hmm. round. But there is no any character of. It's very nice, typical. and I like the freshness. It's very fresh. It's it it invites you to drink another sip and another sip and another, you know it's it's a little bit dangerous. <laughs> yes, that's good. <laughs> I think when when you taste wine that has no oak at all, it has a very kind of direct fruit character. With the oak, it it develops different character mm -hmm. and becomes more complex. But we don't want to lose the fruity essence mm -hmm. of the wine. Mm. It's, it's very complex for a wine in in this price range. <laughs> And we think it's a wine that can continue to improve for a couple of mm -hmm. years. It has a nice tension to it, lovely acidity. It's not a very uh, kind of juicy wine. It's kind of quite serious, quite um, precise. Mm -hmm. As you said, quite yeah. serious, I think. More of a, perhaps a gastronomic wine rather than a wine just on its own um, by the glass. Mm -hmm. So, some, as you said, sometimes people expect something just like a fruit bomb at this, this price, but then they open it and they get something that's surprisingly interesting. Mm -hmm. So should we take a walk through the wine to, through the winery now? Or yes, ja. Von mir aus gerne. Ich bin hingekommen über die Adresse in Google und dann scrollte ich dort runter und dann gibt es tatsächlich ein Street View vom Inhaber. Street View. Yes. And then you can do this, uh, the 360-degree. So. Uh, ich habe noch nicht gezählt, mit wie viel Klicks ich es geschafft habe, aber wir befinden uns jetzt gerade im Keller bei den Fässern. That's very nice. Und ich glaube, die Tür war auf der anderen Seite. Da ist die mm. Tür. Oh, you can move through the door. I didn't know that. I never, I never yes. got so deep into street view that I tried out things like that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> But that's great. This is, uh, uh, falsch geklickt. I think you can go up the yeah. stairs. I think he tried. He, he, he just didn't, uh, you know, the get the right point. Yes. Michael, be careful, don't fall by the steps. <lacht> wir, wir können ja noch eine, eine Challenge machen, mit wie viel Klicks ihr es schafft, rauszukommen. Also ein Raum mit den äh, 
Mit den Fleischern, äh, genau. Und Dort there, drüben Fertigung. Da that's, könnt ihr selber that's like the gucken. steel tanks. Uh, yeah. mhm. Yes. That's Und right, yeah. äh, was bei Street View natürlich geht, äh, durchs Fenster zu springen. Oh, really? Ah. He's jumping through the window now. I, he, he tries at least. <lacht> yes, I think you have to go along the walkway. <lacht> <lacht> nee, aber tatsächlich... Äh, um es abzukürzen, kann ich hier einfach mal in die andere Seite yes. gehen. That's a tasting area. Yes. So here we... a, like a bar and when we have visits, we can have a dinner or, or lunch inside if the weather is not good. If it's good, we can go outside, which is really mm -hmm. nice. So once the COVID is over, we, we just pack a, 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 a big car full of my customers and come over for a nice party in, in, in your winery. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, I think we will have lots of um, energy to have parties when we can go. When, no? we, can go, when we can go and have parties again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it's a really nice place. Eine schöne Spielerei. And it's Thank a very you. nice uh, technical thing to be able to, to walk through the wine yard. So, ich äh, sag allen nochmal, also wenn ihr Lust habt, geht auf die Seite, guckt euch mal die, das Weingut äh, äh, im Detail an, klickt euch durch. Äh, es ist bestimmt sehr schön. Und ähm, vielleicht habt ihr noch Fragen zu dem dritten Wein oder zu anderen Dingen des Weingutes. Ansonsten ähm, würde ich sagen, machen wir gleich weiter mit dem äh, vierten Wein. So back uh, to the wine or back to maybe we should uh, move to the next wine or should we say some more right. about this one? No, I think um, the wine speaks for itself in many ways. So um, as I said, we're going to try the, it's kind of um, equal in the range. It's brother mm -hmm. or sister. Um, with the Garnacho, the first wine, we've gone for that more gastronomic, slightly more serious style. And now we're going to move on to the cupaches. Nuria is going to explain what cupache yes. means. Is it a, a, is it a Catalan word? It's a Catalan word, cupache, very similar to the French word coupage, and means blend, mm. because this wine is a blend of three varieties, garnacha, 60% garnacha, 20% sira, and 20% carignana. Mm -hmm. carignana. The three reds, the three most um, significant reds that we have in Terra Alta. Uh, Garnacha and Carignan autochthon, indigenous variety, and the Syrah is from origin, originally from, from France, the, with, with a really good result in, in our soils. And I think it's a good combination because the Garnacha um, gives the wine this kind of um, sweet tannins, The Carignan has nice, really nice acidity, so it's a fantastic variety to age. Mm -hmm. And then the Syrah is more um, um, spicious, um, spicy. 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 Okay, so um, in diesem Wein gibt es drei äh, Weinsorten. Äh, 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 um, Coupage heißt so viel wie äh, Coupage in, in Französisch, also ein Cuvée. Also grob gesagt ist die Übersetzung Cuvée. Um, die äh, drei Rebsorten sind äh, Ganacha 60 Prozent, äh, Syrah 20 Prozent und äh, Carignana auch 20 Prozent. I have to say that in a wine uh, the vinification is important, but for me the most important point is the, the, the viticulture. If we don't have a really nice grape, we can have a really nice wine. So all the work that we are making in the vineyard is uh, the result is in the glass. Mm -hmm. So everything is made pick by hand. We have a lot of selection. We have a first selection of grapes in the vineyard and second selection in the table, in the sorted table. And then in, in, in the reds, we have the, the, the steamed, which is also Uh, has a selection system, so it's the um, best grape for the for the for the wine. Mm -hmm. No. 
So, ähm, in dem Wein äh, ist eine große Selektion. Also äh, es wird zuerst im Weingut selektiert. Das ist alles Handlese. Ähm, und danach wird es nochmal auf, auf dem Tisch, also quasi, wenn es in den Wein, ins Weingut reinkommt, äh, selektiert. Und ähm, das Ergebnis seht ihr im Glas. Ist sehr klar, sehr äh, duftig. Ähm, so. And then with, with the changing weather, uh, it's very important to have this um, um, scrupulous selection because uh, because the sun is more, uh, we have more sun hours, we have more dry resin. And it's very important to take out the dry resin. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the wine could be really uh, ripeness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 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 it's a real a lot of work to to get the wine into the uh, uh, vinification process, like you do a lot of work beforehand. We we have a lot of work because uh, we also, as I told you, we have seventy five hectares of vine, but some of them are really old, so the the old vines uh, have lots of work to do uh, because you can use any. Um, product to kill the, the the herb and that takes a long time to proceed and um, yeah it's, uh, it has a lot of work but also it's really pleasant because we when we start to make organic viticulture we can we can prove that the biodiversity increase year after year mm -hmm. and that's very nice to to mm -hmm. test oh yeah I just took the first sip and it has a lot of richness and a lot of different aromas. I, I have to grasp it still, you know, it's so much. It's very good. As Nudia was describing earlier, here in the, the winemaking process, we really want to avoid overripe grapes that have become like raisins because that's when you get the heaviness. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's picking right at at the optimal time of ripeness, keeping mm -hmm. the rich, looking for that richness, but keeping the freshness. And then through selection, removing anything that's overripe that could bring that freshness ah, down. Okay. So then you have that, that ideal balance between ripeness and mm -hmm. freshness, which is what I think this wine really has, um, which is, makes it really enjoyable to mm -hmm. drink. Mm -hmm. Not too heavy. Ja, also was sie in diesem Wein halt auch versucht haben, ist diese Balance zwischen Reife und Frische. Ähm, also es wurden halt auch in der Selektion ähm, überreife Trauben, die schon fast so rosinenartig waren, rausgenommen, damit da nichts ist, was überreif ist und nur noch äh, brachiale Frucht, sondern dass diese Balance zwischen ähm, beiden äh, Polen quasi besonders gut ausbalanciert ist. Und ich muss sagen, ich habe gerade irgendwie eine sehr große Geschmacksexplosion im Mund gehabt. Das ist äh, wirklich ein unglaublicher Wein. Ich äh, probiere ihn übrigens auch gerade zum ersten Mal, weil ich bis jetzt nicht dazu gekommen bin ähm, und bin gerade sehr positiv überrascht. I just explained that um, um, I, I originally I wanted to try this wine when it arrived at my place. Um, Chris, I was just, uh, uh, I ordered it because I, uh, I, I was told by Rolf, of course you know Rolf, um, oh, take this one, it's great. And I was like, okay, uh, I do what he says. And, and then I was, when, when the wine arrived, I was like, oh, I have to take a bottle at home and, and try it out. And then I never, I never got to it because then there was COVID and there was Christmas and there was lots of things to organize that I never managed to uh, uh, try the wine beforehand because I usually like to have an idea of the wine of the taste before I, I go into a tasting but this wine I really haven't tried before and I'm so positively surprised that um, what's in the glass that I'm like wow <laughs> it's really great Oh, da kann man dem Rolf blind ja. vertrauen. Sehr schön. Ich habe eine Frage im Chat. Das Verhältnis zwischen Weiß- und Rotwein. Mehr Weißwein oder mehr Rotwein wird angebaut oder verkauft? Um, the question, there is a question from the chat and they are asking if you're, uh, if you're, uh, um, um, uh, if you're uh, making more white or more red wines. How the, the uh, uh, how, how uh, many in, in percent, how many white and how many red you produce in your winery? 
That's definitely a good question <laughs> because it's changing. Um, when we first started out in 2010, we made a lot more red wine. I would say two thirds red, and one third white and no rosé. And over the years, um, the whites become more and more important. So last vintage, we made more white wine for the first time oh. ever. Um, about 60% white, 10% rosé and 30% red. Well, that's yeah. quite unusual for a, for a Spanish winery, right? We are yeah. we are an unusual producer. <laughs> that's because the Garnacha Blanca it becomes to be popular in in Catalonia, uh, and also we have a few um, recognizement international. The Canter give us the best Garnacha Blanca uh, in Spain. Wow. With the ninety seven. 96. 96 points. That's great. And um, but traditionally, uh, Terra Alta was all about the white, mm. and then it changed because the market. But traditionally, is a place. For so whites. you're just just going back to tradition now. <laughs> I think so, but it, but I we love reds as well, and I think Terra Alta reds have a real uh, characteristic because. Close, we're close to places like Monsant and Priorat, which are very famous mm -hmm. for their red wines. Big, muscular, earthy wines. In Terra Alta, we have this kind of fresh character, which I think is quite use, is quite nice for, the, for today. Um, the, the market, people's tastes in general, I think are becoming a little bit more refined and looking for that freshness. Not necessarily just big, powerful reds. So there is definitely a place for Terra Alta reds in the market. Um, but in Germany, I think we sell more white wine than we do red, which would be very unusual for a Spanish producer in mm -hmm. Germany. That's true. Uh, it's very surprising for me. Um, but um, let me explain in German. Uh, so, ähm, was er gerade erklärt hat, ist, am Anfang hatten sie ungefähr zwei Drittel Rot und ein Drittel äh, ähm, Weiß und ein ganz bisschen Rosé. Und jetzt inzwischen, haben äh, dieses Jahr ist das erste Mal, dass sie mehr Weiß produzieren als Rot. Also ungefähr äh, 60 Prozent Weiß, 10 Prozent Rosé und 30 Prozent Rot. Was eigentlich sehr ungewöhnlich ist für ein Spanier, aber äh, ähm, sie sind halt ein ungewöhnliches Weingut. Und äh, das, muss ich sagen, gefällt mir gerade sehr. Ähm, und ähm, es ist aber quasi ein bisschen eine Rückkehr zu der Tradition von Terra Alta, weil eigentlich war das eine Gegend, die ursprünglich mal bekannt war für ihre Weißweine. Und das wurde dann so ein bisschen vergessen, weil der Trend eher zu Sp in Spanien zu Rotweinen ging. Und inzwischen kehren sie da so ein bisschen mehr zurück. Es ist to be uh, uh persistent with the vineyard. And for example, during the summer, when the temperatures go really up, we protect uh, the, the, the grapes with the leaves. So we never throw away the, le the leaves outside because mm -hmm. it's a natural protection, protection to, to, mm -hmm. to yeah. avoid the, the overripeness. So that's what we talked about before with, with the, the leaves all over the, the grapes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you're, and, and, sorry, so you're ahead. not cutting back a lot, like in other in other no. wine yards. I know that that there's a lot of uh, a green cutting, and so you're not doing that. No, just inside to let the wind um, circulate uh -huh. it, but not outside. Ah, okay. And here for this wine, you um. It's around, I can never remember the exact blend. I think it's 60% Garnacha, 20% Carignan, 20% Syrah. Mm -hmm. Here the Garnacha and the Carignan are aged in the larger oak barrels. And the Syrah is aged in the smaller, newer oak barrels. Oh, okay. Because it's more concentrated and structured and can withstand that sweeter mm -hmm. oak and for longer. And it really works well, the Syrah, in these new oak barrels. Mm -hmm. It's a really nice smell. 
You have more darker fruits here. Yeah, yeah. Black cherries, um, some spice, some some tobacco, a little bit of chocolate. Yeah. Oh, my Violet. Oh, my yeah. Smokiness. Smokiness. And I think it still develops in the glass. It's like it's it's completely it's a little bit different from from ten minutes ago. That's right. I mean, for this, this is our baby wine. These two reds are our kind of youngest mm -hmm. wines, but they're still quite complex. They still have some aging potential, even though they're our most um, accessible wines. We treat them very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, they still carry our name. We want them to represent the best that we can do. Yeah, that's great because I I think um, uh, um, it's important that that the wines are good on all levels. You know, if you have a, 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 a sometimes you have wineries they do like really high level reds, but the the cheap ones or the the entry lines are like oh yeah you can barely drink them, um, and and I think if it's much more balanced if the entry line is as good as yours. And the, then you go up from I there. Totally uh, yeah, I'm totally agree because if you show your first wine and it's good, then you have a nice expectations, yeah. no? But if you begin with the first one and it's not good, no, I think our philosophy is clear and we use only the the first uh, juice for our entry mm -hmm. test and that makes a difference. It's very nice. I think I can fall in love with this one, but there's still one to come. So, <laughs> um, let's move to the. Next should we one? move to the next one, or are there any more questions? Uh, Michael says the, the the chat is silent now. Okay. <laughs> So this wine doesn't carry the Herencia Altes name. It's called Experimental. I don't think I need to explain what that means. <laughs> no, I think it means the same and, in German. <laughs> yeah. So this we, we've done a couple of experimental wines. Uh, the, the first experimental wine we actually did was a, a skin contact white wine, which became orange. Mm -hmm. The idea behind the experimental range is to try out new techniques, new ideas, and push the boat out. Do things that we wouldn't do in our main range under the main label, but just do a few bottles, a few thousand bottles, see what mm -hmm. happens. So the white worked really well, and we eventually created an orange wine under the Rencia Altes name, um, which is now actually one of our most sort out more wines which is, is this, this one, one here can you see it it's now um yes that's that's very orange yes very yeah. orange <laughs> yeah. so when i when yeah. i order the next time i should maybe get some of those <laughs> yes uh, it's a really curious wine and um i have to say we're very pleased with how the market has reacted mm -hmm. to it so that that was the kind of bright byproduct of the first experimental wine, mm -hmm. the white wine. Then the next year we did a red, and you're probably aware of um, a movement in the wine trade towards natural yes. wines. And we thought, okay, let's see what we can do. Um, we're not, we don't sell our wines as natural wines because we use a little bit of sulfur in the winery to protect the wines just before bottling. Mm -hmm. uh, We think it's important the wines arrive in good condition um, because we export all around the world to places that like Japan, China, the US. You need the wines to have a little bit of protection. Mm. But we thought we'd try a wine with no added sulfur. Um, so this was the Experimental. It's Carnacha Negra. It was a, a young vine. It was a, a new planting. Um, so it was only, I think, thir three-year-old Carnacha. Mm -hmm. Um, we 
pick, we picked whole bunches. So we picked the bunches and then we didn't destem. We did whole bunches into the tank. Um, we fermented this in a concrete mm -hmm. tank. One of those concrete tanks you saw in the mm -hmm. photo. Um, and natural fermentation, spontaneous fermentation, a lot of skin, so uh, skin contact, um, all the yeasts were there. And we aged it in a fudre, a 2,500-litre fudre, mm -hmm. for around, I can't remember exactly, around four or five mm -hmm. months, making sure it was really full. Because if you have any kind of oxygen, oxygen. in there, then the wine can spoil very yeah. quickly. We, so we, we kept it really full and then bottled very carefully. And this is 2017. 17. So it's our natural wine if you like very nothing added nothing taking it away nothing yeah. added and uh, and for us it's a big surprise because it's very clear no very different style very different style from the rest of the range yes yeah, so it's it has different character yeah. from agarnacha some people like it some people mm -hmm. don't um yeah, when I drank my first orange wine, which has been a couple of years ago at a friend's place who is a um, sommelier in Cologne, and she invited me and we, she was, oh, let's open with an orange wine. And I was like, oh, great, I haven't tasted one yet. It, it may be like five years ago or something before the big hype of the orange wine started. And then I had something in the glass and I was like, okay, this is interesting, but it doesn't taste like anything that I called wine until now. So um, that was what my first experience with, with orange wine. And I think I should explain this because some of my customers may just experience their first natural wine because it's something very different from the usual winemaking. So let me translate this first. So. Um, um, I can give them an impression what they have in the glass because some may don't know what they get the, here. So it's, it's a little bit uh, um, special. Also, um, ihr habt im Wein ein, den Experimental und das ist quasi ein natürlicher Wein, ein natural wine. Das ist eine äh, Bewegung, die hat vor na ja, so fünf, sechs, sieben, acht Jahren gestartet, war erst sehr klein, aber ist inzwischen sehr populär geworden. Und das ist ähm, quasi eine sehr natürliche Art des Weinmachens, ähm, wo der Wein ein bisschen sich selbst überlassen wird, aber auf einem sehr hohen Level der Vinifikation. Also ein, äh, ähm, ein, ein sehr äh, ich würde sagen, quasi eine künstlerische Ausarbeitung von was Wein auch kann. Ähm, in dem Fall hier äh, äh, waren es sehr junge äh, Trauben, die dann in eine natürliche Fermentation gegangen sind, ohne extra äh, ähm, Hefe dazu in die Fermentation, mit sehr viel Hautkontakt. Ähm, und... Ähm, äh. Das macht halt einen natürlichen Wein. Also diese ganze Orange-Wein-Bewegung, das ist halt eher weißer Wein, ähm, macht halt sehr spezielle und andere Weingeschmäcker als andere Fermentation. Also ihr, ihr probiert jetzt wahrscheinlich euren ersten natürlichen Wein und es wird wahrscheinlich anders sein als andere Weine, die ihr je probiert habt. Also äh, lasst euch überraschen, schmeckt rein, äh, probiert so ein bisschen rein. Es ist eine andere Weinerfahrung. Ich habe meine erste Orange-Weinerfahrung vor, ich weiß gar nicht, fünf, sechs Jahren bei einer Freundin von mir in Köln gemacht, die Sommelier ist, die dann sagte, ach komm, lass uns mal ein Orange-Wein aufmachen. Damals war diese Bewegung noch gar nicht so groß und gar nicht so bekannt, aber ich dachte, naja, probiere ich mal aus. Und ich hatte dann einen, ich glaube, es war ein Österreicher im Glas ähm, und ähm, das schmeckte einfach komplett anders als jeder Wein, den ich bis dahin probiert hatte. Es war interessant, aber es war nicht das, was ich als Wein kannte. Also lasst euch einfach ein bisschen drauf ein und probiert mal rein und guckt mal, was es mit euch macht. Ob es was ist, wo ihr Lust habt, mehr rein zu probieren ähm, oder ob ihr einfach sagt, oh mein Gott. Aber probiert es einfach mal aus. Es ist, ich finde es spannend, weil es einfach so ein, so ein Back to the Roots ist. Ähm, was, ich meine, die Römer hatten auch nicht mehr Mittel, um ihren Wein, äh, Wein nennen zu können. Ähm, ähm, ich denke, es ist ein interessantes Experiment. Es ist auch Garnacha. 100 Prozent. Und es ist ohne 
äh, Extras. Also es ist nichts dazu. Es ist komplett pure, also komplett pur. Da ist nichts dazu. Ähm, auch kein, äh, ähm, ähm, keine Sulfite. Ähm, also keine Haltbarkeitmachung in dem Sinne. Weil das wird ja immer dazu gepackt, um den Wein haltbar zu machen. Ähm, es ist einfach ein anderes Weintrinkgefühl. Ich sag noch mal Prost. Probiert rein. This really helped us um, learn more about how we make wines, more about how our grapes respond in mm. in different conditions, and how they how the wines can develop in the bottle with real minimal intervention. Mm -hmm. So, it's it moved us towards a, a kind of position from more conventional winemaking and more conventional philosophy to a more natural philosophy. Even if we're not at the extreme, we definitely moved a few positions along that, that mm -hmm. line. That's interesting because um, I was just thinking, um, in Roman times, they didn't have any more possibilities to, to intervene in, into winemaking. Uh, um, so maybe it's, it's fitting that they found Roman uh, remnants of, of a, a, a living uh, on your ground. <laughs> Yeah, but the, the yeah, but the Romans usually use something that uh, preserves the wine as honey, for example. Oh. They use honey. Oh, yeah. really? Because yeah, my like, my a quick a quick um, introduction. My brother-in-law um, makes um, Roman wine, um, mulsum, called mulsum, and they use uh, honey. And the wine is still bright, and it has uh, six or seven years old. And it's uh, because the honey um, uh, arrastrava. Um, attracts or... Attracts all the um, sediments uh -huh. and uh, keeps the wine really bright for a long, long time. Wow, that's interesting, because I, I never got into, like, archaeological winemaking. Uh, um, uh, I didn't know there's, like, anyone trying to make wine, like, in Roman times. That's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a little bit freaky, <laughs> but... <laughs> but the, the, um, through a um, university um, doctor, mm -hmm. they uh, were looking for some recept receipts And uh, they they try to make a wine as the the Roman times, which was very interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, I think it's mm -hmm. very interesting because um, I come from an area a little bit south of Hanover, where they found one of the. Um, um, they found like a couple of years ago, I think maybe like 2012, they found a Roman battlefield that was untouched. It was like the, wow. there was a battle, battlefield and then there, there was, it was forgotten. And they f could um, see how the battle moved in the woods from the, um, um, what's it called, uh, the, the nails in the shoes of the Romans. Because in the Roman wow. shoes there were all like uh, 200 nails in one shoe. And when they march on the street nothing falls out but uh, but when they fight uh, single nails go out and they found like with with uh, uh, sons in the in the woods where they found the metal remnants in the woods they could make out how the battle moved in the wood and who won uh, and who won and how the romans were chased out of the wood uh, from the nails they found and they found complete untouched um uh, um bodies because there was still um money in in the in the in the in the pouches uh, um because usually battlefields get dropped afterwards and in this case, they found them untouched, and they could even found found like the moves of the of the um, from the uh, people who sh were shooting. 
They found how the yeah. the the movement of the uh, like the ankle of the uh, of the movement uh, of the weird. soldiers, and they could ex they could like extract how the battle moved f because it was untouched, and never before a Roman battlefield was found untouched, and that is like uh, an hour south of here, and they even made a museum out of it, and it, it's very interesting. So I. I really like this detail that somebody uh, uh, found out how they made wine in, in Roman times because it fits into the, the, the puzzle pieces of, of what I, I've seen in my, my surroundings. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, that, that's, it's a, the, the way to make wine, they had some kind of ritual. So they had to uh, move the wine in a, with a cane for, a, I don't know, 40 days, it was like a some kind of ritual mm -hmm. yeah so let me translate so, what I quit, what what I told you because uh, um, maybe some people didn't understand um, um, ich habe gerade erzählt, weil es ganz spannend ist, äh, dass äh, ihr Bruder oder äh, ähm, Schwager ähm, in, äh, bei Rom, römischem Weinmachen dabei war. Also der wird mit Honig äh, konserviert. Und ähm, eine Stunde südlich von Hannover gibt es äh, Karlfeld. Äh, da ist ein Museum von einem über ein römisches Schlachtfeld, das komplett, komplett äh, unberührt war. Also das wurde quasi gefunden äh, durch einen Zufall. Und äh, die konnten anhand der Reste von Metall, von den, von den Nägeln in den Schuhen von den römischen Soldaten, Soldaten, konnten sie komplett den Kampfverlauf nachvollziehen, äh, was halt bis daher noch nie äh, äh, gefunden wurde. Ähm, wenn, wenn irgendwann die Museen wieder aufhabt, geht, fahrt, mal, fahrt mal an den Harzrand in dieses Museum. Es ist wirklich super spannend. Ich durfte halt ähm, vor, weiß ich gar nicht, fünf, sechs Jahren, als das äh, Gräberfeld noch quasi in, in der Ausgrabung war, habe ich eine Führung gekriegt von dem Chef äh, Archäologin von Göttingen, der äh, da an der Ausgrabung tätig war. Ähm, das war super spannend und ähm, äh, kann ich nur empfehlen, das Museum mal anzugucken. Ist auch nicht so weit von hier. So back to the wine. So what? So, yes. so uh, just as a curiosity, I find a bottle of oh Rome great. Wine. <laughs> so that's what your your uh, brother-in-law made. Brother-in-law, oh, yeah, yeah. And it is something that is uh, um, like just an experiment, or they they really sold it. No, they 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 were not. They they are romantic people. His father is a farmer. He's uh, working with us in the winery. He's a psychologist. And then through this man from the university, they try to find this recipe, receipt and um, recipe. recipe, sorry, recipe. And uh, they find, found an old recipe from the Roman times and they tried. For a, for a, for a while, they, they sell the, the little bottles, but uh, at the end they... They finished because it wasn't his job and it was mm -hmm. too much for them. But it's interesting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, very nice. So, what do we taste? So, what what what, what do we smell and what do we taste? I think on the nose, it's. I smell a little bit of violets. Violets. I get a little bit of more kind of um, herby mm -hmm. undergrowth. Like mm -hmm. earthy, humid, earthy, autumnal leaves. Mm -hmm. mm. It, it really takes me into the woodland. Yeah, but more a spring wood than an autumn wood. <laughs> Maybe. I think some people say it has the kind of um, kind of truffles, like that sort of wet wood. But it's changing. It's changing. Yeah, it's it's changing. changing since we. Hmm. It's now a few years old, and I have to say we're quite pleased with Immense. the development. And a little bit of mint in the nose. Yes, yes. Now that you say it. Mm. And, and it has a really cool and fresh taste in the on the tongue. So you hear you taste the. Um, a whole bunches so you have the stems as well to give it that extra grip tension 
because let's keep in mind it's a big wine it's 15 percent mm -hmm. <coughs> it tastes too alcoholic or too heavy because no. it has that tension and freshness from the from the stems um which really adds that that body to it keeps it lively yeah you don't taste the 15 percent <coughs> You can notice it after a few glasses, but you don't taste it immediately. <laughs> Which is dangerous. <laughs> it's funny, actually, just on a, on a commercial level, we are now selling more of this wine this year or, or last year, that the interest has grown recently um, more than when we first released it. I think it's because to find a wine with no added sulfites that's already three years old and still tasting yes. really fresh and good surprised people. So it's added this curiosity factor. It's very interesting because usually, um, or in, in the beginning of the no sulfur me movement, as if you can call it like that, um, there was like, oh, you can drink it, but only for half a year. Um, and this is like really fresh and really nice and really interesting. And it's like three years old, as you said. Mm -hmm. I think some of it's to do with the ripeness. Um, the higher al alcohol wines tend to age better because obviously alcohol is a conservative as well, or preservative, mm -hmm. I should say. So that, keep, that acts as a natural kind of antibacterial mm -hmm. uh, component so the wine stays healthier if it was seven percent alcohol it would really I struggle think i think because you would start, yeah you, you would start seeing strange things happen mm -hmm. in the bottle <coughs> very for me if you are um, doing if you want to do a natural wine with no sulfur added you have first you have to have the the, the vineyard ready so it must be organic viticulture. For me, is in my point of view, is crucial. And then um, the winery had to have perfect conditions in terms of clean and in perfect state. The, the, the barrels must be very clean, very impolute, because otherwise uh, don't work. Yeah. I think it's a very good experiment that you made. Thank you. You're making this in white as well, right? Yeah, the white was um, uh, brisat. Brisat is, um, we call brisat uh, mm -hmm. orange because it's a traditional way to make wines in Terra Alta and it's a lot of uh, skin mm -hmm. contact. But again, we make just one year, or two, years. Or two years, sorry. And now we have the Trementine Ida, which is uh, the orange mm -hmm. that I show you ah, before. Okay. I see. I understand. But yes, so we don't, we don't make experimental every year, but we're always experimenting mm -hmm. in the winery. Um, but we're just curious. We have, we have a big range of wines. I think there are 13 wines under the Herenzi Altes mm -hmm. name. So. We're about to launch some sweet wines as well. We have Carnacha Blanca from 2013, our first vintage in our small winery, um, which is a late vintage mm -hmm. Carnacha. That's now in bottle. It was aged for five years wow. in barrel. Yeah, and we've got um, we've got a Carnacha Tintorera as well, which is a really dark port-like sweet wine, which we're about to bottle. So we've got lots of small projects um, happening the whole time. Um, we don't, yeah, we yeah. don't, we, it keeps yes, life of interesting. Yeah, and also because, because we have a lot of small plots and every one is different. So sometimes we say, uh, we can, let's go and do that separately and mm -hmm. see what happened. And it's uh, very interesting to our knowledge too. I have. We also like to push the team as well. Um, otherwise the team gets a little bit kind of conservative. Um, so we're always saying, let's try this, try that, not with the whole um, batch of wine, but just small, small lots and see what happens. And if it works, we can introduce it the next yeah, that's year. An, that, 
that's a good kind of working, I think, because um, if you if, a, if if a chef always cooks the same recipe and never something else, it gets quite boring. But if yeah. you try out this and that right. and 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 try some st new spices, it it get it it's interesting. So um, that's what we do. That's what we do in my shop as well. Like try out, out new things. So. Um, we never, we never <laughs> bored. Always trying new things. And never be af afraid of mistakes or failure because you learn from the mistakes. Absolutely. Learn from the failures. Mm. So. As in life, no? You learn from the mistakes. Yes. <laughs> well, no. Humans, not, not always. <laughs> Sometimes you don't get a second chance to learn. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it seems uh, at least some t sometimes. But uh, um, I think this is quite a good experiment. Ich höre von dem Orange jetzt äh, das erste Mal. Gibt es da Unterschiede zwischen konventionellen für äh, wie lange sind die Lager bar oder ist es ähnlich? Ah, uh, das ist schwer zu sagen. Uh, Michael was just asking, because he's like the the non wine expert. He's 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 not so deep into wine as, as I am, and he's like, oh, I'm hearing from orange wine about orange wines the first time in my life. How is that? Can I keep them the same time as as a normal wine or longer or was it? What is it? Um, so. Uh, um, well, how would you recommend, uh, uh, yeah. would you put away a bottle of experimental or a, bo or a, a box of experimental and leave it in, in, in the cupboard for like um, uh, a couple of years and try one every year to see what happens? Or would you recommend drinking it within the next two years? I mean, orange wines can be so varied, so different. Um, we, our first ever orange wine only had, I think it was 15 days of skin mm -hmm. contact. Now the orange wine we make under our Herencia test label has five weeks mm -hmm. skin contact. And some friends of ours who make quite well-known orange wine, I think they have six wow. months of skin contact. So those wines will change in, and develop in very different ways. Because the more skin contact you have, the more tannins which acts also as a, um, uh, a way of preserving the wine going forward. So the two things you have are acidity and tannins. If you have both tannins and acidity, that wine can develop mm -hmm. for many years. If you have a wine with high acidity, uh, with no tannins, but it, would, it will always have some tannins because you have the skin contact, then that wine may be okay for medium aging. But our, our wine, which has a lot of alcohol, tannins, and acidity, we think is great mm. for aging. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. interesting. And also, it is a wine which is in, in, in a table, but it is versatile, versatile because you can start with the wine and finish with the wine because it's perfect to um, start with an aperitif, but finish with a chocolate, mm -hmm. for example. So it's good yeah. for all the yeah. all the lunch because our, our orange wine is aged in barrels for almost three years and we have some oxidation in the barrels so it has almost a sherry like um, mm -hmm. quality and once that oxidation has happened in the barrel then the wine doesn't oxidize anymore in the bottle, in the bottle yeah. so that bottle can last for many many years so to answer Michael's question it depends on the uh -huh. wine. <laughs> but uh, very great wines. I, I'm, you know, um, I knew a bit about your philosophy because I, uh, I had you in my portfolio a couple of years ago, and then I, I uh, was making a break and now i took you back because i was like oh now they are completely uh, uh, ecological uh, um, uh, um, uh, and um, that's interesting now take them back get them back into my my place and um, i really i like the the philosophy the first time but i think you proved much more and it's getting more deeper into the natural way which i quite 
think is a good way to make wines because it's more sufficient sufficient and more like m making it possible to go on in a more natural and 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 uh, um uh, how how do you say it in english um a persistent way uh, in a more uh, you know giving back to the nature with with all your planting and more uh, biological um ways and um uh, biological diversity i think it's a it's a good way to improve a vineyard into into the uh, ecological way um and improving the philosophy in that mm -hmm. direction um it's a good way and when i first and when i it's first good. had you in my portfolio i was quite in love with the rosat but uh, uh and i could still you know love it but i i quite like the the ganacha blanca a lot more than i did the last time which i was like wow this this ganacha blanca has improved so much more since going uh into into the the ecological uh, way and um the whole philosophy is is just so round and and it fits all together uh, that's something i really like thank you for making such great wines <laughs> no thank you very much for your words so at the end we are in a constant evolution no and um bueno at home we try to be healthy in terms of organic as much as possible so for me, don't have any sense, don't do the same at, at the winery because it's our philosophy of life. And also because um, if we want to save, save the planet, we need to, to go in this direction. And, and it's not difficult in Terra Alta to make organic grapes. For me, don't have sense to go in the other direction. Um, our ancestors from years and years never used anything for the for the vines never and then in the revolution industrial revolution they be, they starts to put um, silly things in the vineyards the plant is very very clever and don't need anything only love <laughs> only love and dedication <laughs> absolutely yeah absolutely Thank you. From uh, I have a question still, uh, which I I just remember. How is it with um, some wine, wines are under the name of of Altes and some names are on the name of De Han or together? Uh, how is it with the different labels in, at your vineyard? Is it because um, the the Spanish name the Spanish yeah, because... name last name giving is so different from right. us? No, it's, it really is because, um, as I was explaining earlier, the experimental range, we don't want to confuse the market by putting it under the Herencia Altes brand because it's so different. So, Dahan Altes is the name uh -huh. of our company, if you like. And then we have Herencia Altes is the name of the project, ah, of the brand. Yeah. But the Hanaltes is the combination of both of our names. Both, yeah, because the Hanaltes is his surname and my surname mm -hmm. together, which again is the surname of our kids. Because you know, in Spain, kids adopted the surname of the father and the second of the mother. And Altes is my surname, and is, uh, I think, the most popular surname in, in Batea, which is my born mm -hmm. town. And it's and population town, so mm -hmm. very tiny. Um, probably half of the population uh, have Altes as a surname, so <laughs> big family. <laughs> okay. But the, the Dahana Altes label, if you like, allows us to try different things. The Herencia Altes is the serious producer name that is a guarantee of, of um, consistent quality. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm really happy with your wines. I, I can't, you know, um, it's just uh, to express my, my gratitude for uh, uh, such a dedication for making such great wines. I'm, I'm just, you know, it's um, for me as a, as, 
as a seller of your wines, it's um, uh, just good to know the philosophy and to um, to be. For me, it's just oh great! This is something that I can sell with a good conscience because it's it has a good philosophy and it helps to save the planet because it's um, made with love and where in an eco ecological way so um, it helps with what you said with saving the planet because I think we are running out of time uh, altogether and if we don't start yeah, doing I'm things really. at some point and I think you're doing a lot with like being off the grid and and doing uh, um, and ha uh, uh, um, doing solar it's it, it's a good step in the right direction so um, thank you for really good wines. <laughs> no, thank you to you. But we are trying to do our best for the planet uh, in a tiny, <laughs> tiny portion because we can't do anything else. But no, we are happy with your support too. Thank you for having us tonight. And thank you for, for the people that follow us from the other part of Europe, which is uh, always nice yes, to be in touch and to have the impression Uh, of our wines. Thank you. And I hope this uh, bloody pandemic goes quickly and we can find in the winery or in Germany on, or any Yes, any hopefully place. we can go back to having uh, fairs and meetings with lots of people and just travel again freely. Um, but I think vaccination is on its way. Uh, hopefully it works and hopefully we are getting in line at some point because I'm too young and too healthy to be in line anytime soon. So um, I think we have to wait a while until until it's our, our turn to get a, a syringe in our uh, arm. <laughs> But Well, on meanwhile, meanwhile, we can find with a glass of wine yes. through internet. <laughs> yes, I hope... Uh, um, <laughs> I hope it works. I mean, it's uh, um, there, there have been some funny videos around of people saying, "Oh, it's like like a, a disinfection uh, to to drink a lot of wine." But uh, <laughs> 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 we have to help ourselves with keeping the mood up. So this is a good way. <laughs> sure. For sure, I'm agree. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Very thank you. Well, th thank you so much for for dedicating this evening to our wines and for inviting us onto your um, your show and your tasting. It's, it's been, been a really nice experience. It's been a pleasure. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Michael, thank you for your yes, second uh, part. Um, uh, You're <laughs> welcome. Uh, please stay in the chat for, for the next minutes. Uh, we have a private talk after. Yes, and I will say some last words in German to my customers and all people who participated tonight. So uh, one minute. Ja, vielen Dank für alle, die dabei waren. Vielen Dank, dass ihr dabei wart. Ich hoffe, wir konnten euch einen schönen Eindruck von diesem tollen spanischen Weingut geben in Terra Alta. Und ich hoffe, wir können bald wieder hinreisen und wir können bald wieder Partys haben mit Freunden. Und bringt Frohsinn und Heiterkeit in die Welt. Hebt das Glas und seid einfach zuversichtlich, dass es bald besser wird. Prost!